He's going to make sure that you have what you need and the formula you need to get on track. Once you start that praying, Jesus got your back. Welcome back to my channel it's Ari, and today we're going to be doing another episode of on air with Ari. and in today's video we are going to be doing an advice video and this video is going to be giving you tips and tricks on how to grow your relationship with Christ this goes for men and women very simple very easy to follow and I really hope this benefits you guys and helps you guys as much as it helped me getting into my walk with Christ so many people have asked me Ariana how did you get your your walk with Christ so strong etc like I'm just gonna help you guys and give y'all some little tips and tricks so y'all can get on the same page as me you feel me period before we get into this video make sure you guys subscribe make sure you comment if you have any questions or concerns and also turn my post notifications on so you can see more of me make sure you also go check out my last podcast episodes will be linked below as well as my group me link if you're a woman and want to join my sisters in christ link so yeah so i won't hold you guys up any longer than i already have let's go ahead and get into this video so a lot of people come to me and ask me, Ariana, how do you get your faith jump started? How did you get your relationship with Christ so strong? How are you so confident in God? One, I have taken years of learning. I've been a Christian my whole life. My dad had me growing up reading my Bible and really strong on my Christian faith. So it was never really a question if I was a Christian at all, but on the aspect of getting close to God and actually having that personal relationship that took my own doing and me just really diving into it and realizing the importance of having God in my life. And once I started to lean on him and put all my burdens on him because I faced depression and so many other things, I just realized that being with God was the best option that I could have ever chosen because without him, I'm really nothing. And a lot of people like, oh, well, you know, how do you know that you have a relationship with him? How do you feel connected to him? It's something that I can feel in my spirit. Like when I'm at church and stuff like that, I can feel in my spirit, like, you know, God moving through my fingertips. That's definitely something that I have just built over time. And I've learned the difference between my flesh and my spirit. And when my spirit is moved, I can tell. When my flesh is being moved, I can tell. So let's go ahead and jump into this advice video. I'm gonna make sure it's not too long. Very to the point, not too detailed, because honestly, these tips are very straight to the point and easy to follow number one i would recommend to anyone who is trying to step into christianity and wants to build a relationship with christ would be getting baptized baptism is so important john 3 5 actually talks about it jesus himself talks about baptism because he himself was baptized because it's a representation of what we should be following and what we should be doing as christians ourselves and i'm gonna go ahead and read that verse to you john 3 5 says jesus answered verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god jesus was baptized by john getting baptized is a public announcement of your faith for jesus letting others know as well as jesus know that you are declaring him as your lord and you have no shame in it and you're being born again once you get baptized that means you're born again a lot of people are like what do you mean born again it means born again in the spirit meaning that your spirit is supposed to be connected to jesus and that you're supposed to be living in his commandments and in his ways so getting baptized is definitely something that i think everyone should do and it should be an essential that you do as a Christian, um, whether you attend church or not. I think it's very important for you to go get baptized and confess your public announcement of being a follower of Christ. I got baptized and that was definitely something that I definitely highly recommend. It was a beautiful experience. I felt so at peace. I definitely felt fulfilled. I felt so moved and it was definitely a beautiful experience to have my family around and it definitely made me start thinking of my actions a lot more than before I was baptized. Number two would be going to church, aka fellowship. Going to church is very important. Now, a lot of people do not like to go to church and they have their reasons and a lot of the reasons are good. Um, a lot of these churches do not actually teach the word of God the way they're supposed to. A lot of them still keep worldly ways into their teachings and they don't actually read out of the Bible. But I am going to say finding a church home that makes you comfortable is important. Number two would be you have to let your spirit move you to the right church. If a church is not for you, that does not mean give up on every single church. There are real churches out there that will actually teach you what you need to know and put you on the right track with God. And on top of that, I always tell people you never know what message you need to hear when you go to church. A lot of the times when I'm going through obstacles and I go to church, it's a lot of the times when I'm going through things, it's like God is personally speaking to the pastor to speak to me. And I get messages that I definitely needed to hear and I get that advice that I definitely need 
needed to hear and I also get some scripture along with it but also the fellowship part of it is beautiful a lot of the times when you go to church and it's a good church they do a lot of things for your community they will give back to your community you'll have food drives you can go help people in the neighborhood you can go help the poor you know you could join a church choir you can lead a youth group you can go on missions you can go on youth trips there are so many things that are presented at church and you just have to grasp that and actually move forward with it so that is something i definitely highly recommend plus when you're in a good church the worship is 10 out of 10 and there's been a few times i've been to church and was crying because of the worship like worship is real and it's very important for christians to do like if you're not worshiping at least once a week you definitely need to add that onto your list of things that you need to do because having that connection with god and praising him is very important because it shows your gratitude for him so definitely join a church and get into that number three would be prayer a lot of people ask me, well, Ariana, you know, my flesh doesn't want me to pray or I just can't get myself to do it. That is something that you're going to have to force yourself to do because there's times where I'm being stubborn and my flesh is like, no, 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 you're not going to pray. But my spirit is like, yes, 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 yes. You have to force yourself to pray. It might seem awkward because you're like, okay, well, you know, I'm fresh into my faith and it just sounds like I'm talking to myself, but God hears you. Jesus hears you. You have to pray. Prayer is so essential because that's your one-on-one -on -one time with God. That's your time to talk to him. He's listening. And make sure you always finish your prayers with in Jesus' name, amen, because Jesus died for our sins. It's a direct connection to God. So make sure you finish your prayers with in Jesus' name. But prayer is definitely that time to ask your questions, ask for things to be revealed, you know, ask for the things that your heart desires, you know, ask for clarification, ask for wisdom and understanding, ask to be healed. Those are direct connections to God and it's very much needed and prayer is so powerful. Just remember when there's two or more praying or even worshiping or reading their Bible, Jesus is amongst them. So remember that anytime you're like hesitating, go find somebody to pray with or find somebody who can pray over you because when it's two of you guys, just know for a fact that Jesus is present with you guys. But prayer is definitely important on getting on track with Jesus. Asking for that motivation to get your relationship jump started jesus is going to give that to you he's going to make sure that you have what you need and the formula you need to get on track once you start that praying jesus got your back mm -hmm. oh that ate i ate that up number four would be find friends of faith and that kind of goes into fellowship but finding friends of the same faith as you is so important very very important because one those people will have your back when you're slipping up when you're having your moments of downward heels, those people will be there to uplift you. And also when you go through good things, those people will be there to also uplift you. Those people will know how to help you get through your hardships and also get through all your great times. Having friends of Christ is just a need because everybody needs those friends that can hold them hand in hand to get to where they want to be, which is the kingdom. Everybody wants to get to the kingdom. The end goal of Christianity is to make sure you get that that ticket to the kingdom. So having those friends that know how to keep you grounded and hold you accountable and make sure that you're staying true to your faith is so important. And please don't ever take it for granted. If you're on this walk with Christ, you need people to help you stay on track because when you don't have those friends, it feels very lonely and it's easier for you to want to fall back into your old ways because you're like well it's easier for me to have friends when i'm drinking smoking partying and clubbing you know but it's harder for me to find friends when i want to go to church or go to brunch or do something that's not of the world and i just want you to remember that the walk with christ is very lonely but there are people who will hold you don't settle for less do not settle for people who are not christ-like or christ-minded it's very important for you to be christ-minded when you're christ-minded you can know how to hold other people accountable you learn forgiveness you learn how to be happy you learn how to you know get through things you learn how to uplift others and that's very important on the walk with christ number five would be remove worldly ways so we kind of briefly touched on that but have to realize that in the spiritual realm there are definitely portals and those portals are opened up in certain atmospheres that let demons in and influence you so it is very important for you to remove certain ways out of your life such as 
going to clubs filled with people who are on different types of timing and you know being around people who probably have all types of demons in them and stuff like that and who are not in track with god because a lot of times you have to remember these people don't believe the same god as you a lot of these people you might believe in christ of course believing in christ means that you're actually you know protected but at the end of the day everybody is tolerant to certain things so you have to remember that when you're putting yourself in certain situations and putting yourself around certain people you should not be doing that i can definitely say when you remove yourself from certain worldly aspects it actually does clear your mind it helps to get you christ-minded because you realize okay well now i'm not around all this influence and all these people who are not on the same path as me or want the same things as me now i have time to actually think about what i should be doing which is going to church you know helping the community because jesus even says you have to help the poor you have to help the people in need you have to give back to people and that is just very very important especially on a walk with christ you have to learn how to do those things number six would be get bible study tools it is very important for you to get things that can help you read your bible especially starting off because a lot of people are not as in tune with their spirit so they cannot understand a lot of the things that are being said in the bible and when you pray before you read your bible that's the number one studies rule right there prayer before you read ask for wisdom and understanding make sure you invest into these objects if you want to actually start bible studying and if you're doing it by yourself and even with others it just really helps you number one would be a devotional a devotional pretty much gives you like different topics every single day with verses and it really keeps you on track and I usually get the 365 day one it's just very important to keep you on track and keep you grounded with God and also it can give you ideas of what you should read number two would be a bible study guide i have a five minute bible study guide it really just gives me like a little scripture but i do go actually read the chapters it has and it kind of talks about what the chapter was about and what you should take away from it and you get to write down your takeaways from it so definitely invest into a bible study guide because it really guides you through the chapters it puts in front of you number three would also be a notebook when you're reading the bible it is so important to take your notes because when you're taking your notes you can go back and read your notes and sometimes you might forget what you was talking about or reading and when you go back to your notes you can see what you're talking about or reading and boom there you go it's right there yeah you, you got the notes to go back and reflect on so make sure you invest into a bible study guide number four would be highlighters because you need to highlight important things make sure you highlight things that you need to to remember to see to you know because if your spirit moved you to highlight it don't be like me because when jesus speak i just highlight it all because he just be making so much sense but when your spirit moves you to highlight something it's for a reason so just make sure you do that just a few essential things that you'll need to start a bible study just to start off for people who just don't know where to start or what to get get those things it'll definitely help you number seven would be do not compare your walk to anybody else's walk comparison is the thief of joy and it is so important for us not to compare our walk with anybody else's because you never know what people are going through behind closed doors you never know what they've actually went through or endured to get to where they are in their walk with christ and first of all comparing that's one of the ten commandments do not envy your neighbor never envy anybody else's walk or what they got going or where you think they are compared to you because you know sometimes things everything that glitters is not gold like sometimes people make it seem like they're just such devoted christians they're amazing and they're not actually doing what they're supposed to do so remember that when you like compare yourself to other people's you know journey don't ever do that because your journey with god is special and your journey with god is unique and it's your journey with God for a reason because nobody else has that connection with God like you have that connection with God. Remember that everybody has their own connections with God. I have my own connection with God. My dad does. My sisters do. You do. Everybody has their own connection with God and you should never compare what you got with God to anybody else's because what is that going to do for you? If anything, that's going to want to deter you on your route with God because you're going to be like, well, you know, I feel like I'm not this dedicated. I'm not this devoted. I'm not this full of knowledge. You can get there too. You can get there too. If anything, if you see somebody's walk and it seems like it's more fulfilling or more in tune or, you know, more on track, that should just motivate you to want to get your stuff together and get closer to God and period. Like you shouldn't be wanting to compare yourself to anybody or anybody's walk with God with yourself. Just remember that everybody's walk is different for eight would be showing yourself grace and that kind of ties into comparison if you mess up if you sin 
please do not sit there and bash yourself to the ground because you messed up with God. Do not sit here and think of God with a carnal mind like, oh, he'll never forgive me. You know, I messed up so bad. I don't know how to fix this. Like, God, what do I do? I know you hate me now. Don't ever think that God thinks the way humans do. God is God. And Jesus is Jesus. Jesus has so much mercy and grace for everybody. He died for humanity. Like, that is so much love and grace that a man that walked this earth and how God put himself into a man to walk this earth, died for our sins for eternity, for people before him, people during him, and people after him. So just show yourself grace because at the end of the day, God forgives. God forgives. Now, there are certain things that God don't forgive. Go do your research on them. But make sure that you realize that God forgives. God used murderers in the Bible. Cain was the first murderer. And guess what? God put the mark of Cain on Cain. And he could not be touched. God showed so much grace to Cain. And he was the first murderer. Blessed him abundantly after he murdered his own brother. You know, you have to remember that. Like, you have to remember that God is forgiving. He does not think like us. He used some of the worst people that you can name to actually write the Bible, to actually prophesy for him, to actually become disciples. Remember those things when you're not showing yourself grace because God uses everybody. He could use a murderer to spread his message. You never know. So when you are not showing yourself grace, you have to realize that God forgives. He doesn't think like us. His heart is pure and he knows we're human. Like God is God, but he knows that we're human and that we make mistakes. And yeah, of course, don't intentionally make mistakes. But if you have a slip up, have grace on yourself and pray on it and strengthen that with God and try not to repeat those actions because you don't want to fall down that rabbit hole like you don't want to sit over here and fall down the rabbit hole of not showing yourself grace because you'll never pull yourself out of it and then next thing you know it'll be 20 years and you haven't sat down and prayed forgive yourself of your sins move forward and just know that it is okay number nine will be clean out your music um this secular music no a lot of these secular songs no now i'm not saying every single secular song is demonic at all because there's still a couple of secular songs that i like that i do not think are demonic at all you know what i'm talking about if you watch my last podcast episode of you know music that's not good for you that'll give a more in-depth explanation of what i'm talking about when i say get rid of your music but try to change your music and get into better music habits because music is literally a portal to your soul almost it's going straight through your ears to your body and last but not least read your bible it is so important for us to read our Bible personally and get that connection with God and actually understand his word and actually, you know, get into that. Like, it is so important for us to actually read our Bibles. You can listen to as many sermons as you want. You can look at as many little verses as you want online. Nothing is better than sitting down and reading the word for yourself. Nothing. Nothing is better than actually sitting down, asking God for wisdom and understanding, and reading the Bible for yourself because it is so important for us to feed our spirit what it needs, which is the word. Jesus was the word and Jesus is in the Bible. That's why anytime anybody asks me, well, where should I start in the Bible? The gospel of Jesus, because he is the word. He's spitting facts. It's very important for you guys to know the importance of reading your Bible because without your Bible, you wouldn't know anything about God. So make that time to read your Bible for God pretty much wraps up this podcast episode slash advice video i really hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope it was helpful and just straight to the point and very easy to comprehend and follow if you like this remember to subscribe comment turn my post notifications on to see more of me also follow me on tiktok at ariana kossi and instagram at ari josephine and yeah stay blessed as always stay positive i love you guys so much and i'm here for you guys the best that i can be until the next podcast episode i will see you guys around